Our guest today is a numbers cruncher with a master's in mathematics from IIT Chennai. His understanding of finance is unmatched. Also blessed with an elephantine memory, he is able to recall case serial numbers and match them with specific facts and details. These three qualities perhaps compel the Supreme Court to appoint him as advisor to the special investigation team on black money, besides of course his decades of experience as a revenue officer. Today we have with us a revenue officer who is truly a tax and black money expert. He was the former chairman of the Central Board of Direct Taxes who went on to become the first non-IAS officer to be appointed as a Central Vigilance Commissioner, heading an independent body that targets corruption in government departments, public sector banks and public sector undertakings. Let's meet Mr. Kosaraju Viraya Chaudhary. Mr. Chaudhary, welcome to Life Beyond Tax. Thank you. Uh through your medium, I would like to thank all your viewers uh, for the, giving me this opportunity to share some of my thoughts on the Vigilance Commission and anti-corruption movement in the country. You are the first uh, non-IS officer to take over as a CVC, a post which is traditionally reserved for retired IAS officers. Did your appointment face any opposition? The criteria required for appointing a person as a Central Vigilance Commissioner or a Vigilance Commissioner is laid down in the Central Vigilance Commission Act. The Act doesn't say that uh, the officer should be from a particular service. It only lays down the criteria such as what kind of an experience he should have. He should have been either a central government servant or he should have been a public sector employee of certain seniority. And even a private sector person having that kind of an experience can apply. So it is uh, an open competition and a lot of people applied. I understand about 132 people were considered oh. and the government took a stand and there is some opposition and in fact there is a red petition pending before the court and uh, that will be decided by the courts. Sir, every year you publish a report in which you report about the uh, uh, acts of corruption which have been uh, which have been found and which government departments are involved. Now, which are the government departments which are traditionally lagging behind in implementing the advice given by the CVC? Uh, it would be difficult to name a department or a set of departments. As far as uh, not implementing the advice of the commission is concerned, mm -hmm. whenever an advice given by the commission is not acceptable to the ministry or we in the uh, legal partners call the discipline authority, then there is a procedure laid down under the rules that they go back to the DOPT along with the advice of the commission and the view of the uh, DA, that is the discipline authority as to why they don't want to implement it. And then the DOPT tenders its advice, either it says uh, follow the CVC's advice or they say we agree with you, you agree to disagree. So given the status of the commission as an advisory body, we do believe that the discipline authority has the final call. But wherever the discipline authority does not agree with the advice of the commission and even on reconsideration the commission thinks that it should be implemented but it is not implemented. The law provides that we report it in the matter of uh, the annual report to be placed before the both houses of the parliament and uh, that is how the public get to know and in an odd case the parliament may also debate it. So it is more of a mechanism put in place so that the parliament which created the commission through the act mm -hmm. and the public at large get to know what kind of an advices have been not implemented, what has been implemented. Uh, sir, I believe last year you had more than 30,000 complaints fresh as well as carried forward and uh, uh, now typically uh, what percentage of these complaints are left unaddressed? And what happens is public generally believe that if there is a grievance 
uh, a complaint is different from a grievance. A lot of people to their mind for whatever good reason, it is good that they think of the CVC, they make a complaint to the CVC. But the CVC has certain limitations. A CVC looks after only the matters relating to the vigilance or complaints against central government officers and the central public sector undertakings and a few others like that. So a whole lot of these complaints relating to either the state governments or other independent organizations or people falling below a certain category. Like for example, in central government, we look at cases of group A. We do not generally look at cases below group A okay. unless a group A officer is also supposed to have been a part of the same misconduct. So, we do get a large number of uh, complaints, but of that the number which is actionable by the commission mm -hmm. is hardly around 1500 to 2000. Uh, what are the limitations you face in terms of resources, funds, personnel, manpower? Funds is not an issue ma'am, mm -hmm. uh, because at least in the last one and a half years, I never had an occasion to feel that because of funds we are not able to do something. Manpower, yes, there are some limitations because overall in the central government also, compared to the number of vacancies that are arising at the director, joint secretary and above, mm -hmm. the number of people available is less and not many state governments are willing to relieve officers on deportation. So we do have something like 15-20 percent vacancies off and on, a little bit going up and on. But still the DOPT obliges us, it does give us a priority and fill our vacancies. But we have a limitation more than the number of people and the quality of people. There was a, a study which was done uh, by the CVC that it takes about 8 years exactly. for an investigation to be completed. 8 years delay, not 8 years. Yeah, One eight, and a half years eight. is what we should be taking max oh, right. beyond that 8 years. So we put certain checks and monitoring in place in the last one year. The study as on 1-9 is on, hopefully by end of this month. Uh, we are going to publish and we are using the same criteria as we used for the previous study mm -hmm. to see whether we improved or we further deteriorate. So, uh, so uh, which are the points, uh, which are the cause for the hitch? What delays One was uh, I think uh, lack of monitoring, one was definitely on account of lack of monitoring because in the last one year we improved uh, the monitoring mechanism fixing responsibility even of the vigilance officers for not doing it in time. I hope we have improved the position, but let me see uh, when we get the report by the end of this month. We have also found some other things that uh, people did not have a proper understanding as to what kind of a cases should be kept pending. Say for example, if a matter is referred to CBI, the departmental officers used to think that we should not do anything till the CPI decides. Or if a senior officer is looking into an action or a misconduct of a senior officer and a junior officer is also associated with that, whether it should be done simultaneously or both should be investigated. This kind of a issues also work. So we have resolved some of them. Sir, you are also empowered to uh, monitor the progress of CBI investi investigations in the CBI. Uh, how do you go about it? How do you monitor this? Uh, we have a two way of doing it. One is we have every month a structured meeting with the Central Board of uh, Central Bureau of Investigation, which is attended by the Director CBI along with his team of uh, officers, mostly a joint director policy and his team of additional director, I mean assistant directors and so on. Mm -hmm. And the commission on the other side, where they take us through the work done by them during the preceding month. Mm -hmm. And since the work is so large, it is split into three parts so that every issue gets discussed once in three months. In addition, specific cases which we have noticed either during the working of the commission during the month or during the working of the CBI during the month, they are also included in the agenda. We also discuss the 
matters relating to delay in the conclusion of investigation, quality of investigation reports, and the pendency of the various cases before the trial courts, sanction for prosecution, uh, and also the filling up of the vacancies in CBI because the commission is also associated in the matter of filling up of the vacancies. Right, sir. Now, uh, with the amendments in the Prevention of uh, Corruption Act, with the necessity of uh, uh, getting sanction for investigation and uh, uh, prosecution of public servants retired and uh, serving, uh, don't you think that because there is a sanction which is needed for initiation of investigation, it sort of delays the process and could also lead to tampering of evidence? Any delay can cause damage to the investigation, particularly uh, in the matter of uh, tampering of the evidences. But I personally feel the erstwhile section 6A, mm -hmm. which required the investigating agency to obtain the prior approval, uh, was a good thing. But unfortunately, the 6A gave the protection only to a certain category of government servants, namely the Joint Secretary equivalent and above. True. It ignored the lower, lower people. As a result, probably the court thought that there is an Article 14 issue, yeah. that uh, there is no yeah. equality and then the court struck down the law. Mm -hmm. The Commission is on record and it is also my personal view, uh, this is not a comment on the judgment, the judgment all of us appreciate there was probably a lacuna in the law that it gave this protection only to a certain category of people. Well, they do make this category of people, joint secretary and above, they do, they are uh, senior officers and they do need protection. But that does not mean that the officers below that, they do not need protection. So, every government and you see the criminal proceedings are a very serious matters. Mm -hmm. It is very easy to make allegations and it is once investigation is started, the officer is subjected to a lot of uh, kind of a, uh, stress. So, it is appropriate in my view that some level of officer other than the investigating agency. Mm -hmm. Investigating agency, yes, I do agree that most of them are fair they try to be as fair as possible, give enough opportunity, etc. So, before you undertake that kind of a rigorous investigation, somebody who has seen his work, maybe the immediate one level above him, or if you think one level above man is mixed up with the man who is actually doing, maybe make it two levels or three levels above, apply his mind and give this kind of a nod. So, the question of delay, if the system works, it should not take more than a day or more than two days, sure. if only the sanction is to be approved. True. But that saves a lot of trouble, because if you look at the number of cases in which investigation is initiated, be it a PE or an RC, which ultimately uh, boils down to a prosecution or even a, dis a discipline proceeding. The percentage may be uh, anything like 50 percent or little less than that. So, why should this large number of people mm -hmm. be put to this kind of a inconvenience yes. yeah. if a couple of levels higher person after all, all said and done, even the government recognizes under the conduct rules that every superior authority should look into the conduct of his subordinate authority. Mm -hmm. And in fact, a, a rule has been cast, rule 3.2 of CCS conduct rules which says that every superior officer is responsible for the integrity of his junior officer. So, he be consulted and if he thinks that yes, there is something wrong going on here which requires a criminal investigation, uh, that kind of an advice should be taken. But sir, even the, even the duration within which, which the sanction has to come through, it is about three to four months. Is not that an extended period of time which could also be leading to delays? Uh, let me tell you, you see, the sanction and prior approval are two different things. What I explained so far is the stage of approval. investigation. 
prior to investigation and registering an RC as mm -hmm. they call. Mm -hmm. That is the stage at which I am saying that let there be an approval for every person. Earlier section 6A used to give this protection to only, only joint secretary officers. and above. Yeah. I am saying right from the group D official, he should have a protection that some level of officer applies his mind and says within the organization says yes, there seems to be a misconduct, let yeah. it be investigated. Once the investigating agency investigates, if it finds that there is a criminal misconduct, they will come back seeking a sanction from the DA. If they do not find, then they will suggest either a departmental inquiry or they may close the case. So, in those few cases where sanction is sought, that is where this three months time limit comes. Sure. Now, the three months time limit, I have made a study in the commission that less than 15, 20 percent of the cases we are able to abide by the two months time limit. The reason is particularly in the case of All India Services officers, there are different agencies involved. For example, if an officer belongs to a say Karnataka cadre, so the Karnataka government has to give its uh, views, then the department of personnel has to give its views, both these come and then the commission advises. Then the matter goes to the Honorable Prime Minister who is now the Minister for Personnel also and then he takes a call whether a sanction has to be given or not. So the very process it is not practical to give within three months. So we have made a proposal or a request uh, which is now being filed before the Supreme Court that since it is part of the order of the Supreme Court mm -hmm. that this three months be extended to something like five months or six months then immediately people would say that is it not delaying the trial. Yeah. Uh, in my view it is not delaying the trial because you would be shocked to know that after that sanction is given, let us say a trial, I mean a charge sheet is filed by the police in the court, it is not going to be tried tomorrow morning. Today you would be surprised to know there are more than 5000 cases where the trial is pending for more than 5 years. And there is hardly a case where the trial starts immediately, if not the next day within three months of the filing of the charge. So, this is at worst eating into that gap of five years sure. which is already happening. True. And what would you think of the Supreme Court's uh, recent judgment that uh, uh, prior sanction may not be necessary for officers who have been transferred or promoted or moved out of the office? This again ma'am, I think uh, the Supreme Court told this in the context of the uh, sanction for investigation, not for the prosecution. Uh, prosecution. Yeah. That is at the 6A stage. That's right. Yes. Uh, which is 6A is no yeah. longer there. Yeah. It is at that stage that uh, the uh, Supreme, this is my understanding. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it is uh, I cannot comment on the uh, judgment of the Supreme Court, but my personal view is that there is a need for application of mind before you take this kind of a grave uh, and serious uh, uh, actions such as criminal investigation. Uh, because if the whole thing goes through and the man is not found to be guilty, uh, if not guilty at least not having a chargeable offence against him, mm -hmm. then people would say what is there, he has been let off, nothing has happened to him. But the harm will be done that he undergoes this. Uh, process of going through the criminal investigation for a period of two to three years. Currently, it takes about two years for uh, any corrupt act to come out in the public, minimum. Uh, I will yes. slightly modify it. Currently, we do not know how much time it takes uh, for the act to come out. But what we can only measure is after there is a smell of the act, mm -hmm. corrupt act by way of a complaint or an allegation or something coming in the public domain, we are supposed to conclude action in that regard within 18 months. Okay. That is the timeline built in as per the CVC's manual, but then it has been taking more time. So, we are trying to work on that. Then we have advised the organizations to revise their manuals. Uh -huh. Most of the manuals by which you work, they have all become very outdated. True. And the commission's own manual is about 9 years old. 
So we are in advanced stage of uh, uh, revising it. Hopefully by end of October we'll revise the new manual. I see. We've also started going more to the public. For example, we had our Vigilance Awareness Week of 2015, where we said preventive vigilance as a tool for good governance. We visited about 5,000 schools and colleges, and we conducted uh, seminars, debates, oratory, poster writing, debate, uh, essay writing, etc., on the harmful effects of uh, corruption, uh -huh. how to prevent corruption, so on and so forth. Young minds, children of age of seven, eight, ten onwards to the MBA students, we enrolled them because we thought that is one way we uh, bring awareness, awareness in people. Yeah. Not only that, children when they grow up, maybe they will be more mm -hmm. ethical, but they have a great influence on their family, True. father, brother, mother, sister, etc. So that was one way. So this year, in our Vigilance Awareness Week, we are proposing to take up the concept of how to involve the public at large uh -huh. in A, being away from corruption, being not a part of uh, any improper process, B, how to bring it to light uh, to which agency and at what level, so that the ultimate aim is to ensure that the corruption is brought down, if not totally eliminated. Sure, sir. We wish you all the very best, sir. Thank and you. thank you so much for spending time with thank us. You. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir.